trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. Just why I trust him. Just why I trust him. I sought the Lord and he heard. I don't want 
walk by sight. I trust in God. I, I trust in God. I, I, I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I trust in I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I trust in God. Not what I see, but what I believe. I trust in God. I will walk. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I trust in God. I trust in God. Hallelujah. So sweet to trust Him. Hallelujah. Just to take Him at His word. Hallelujah. Just to rest on its promises, hallelujah. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. confidence in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a wave offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If it be true for you, if it be your testimony, as you give the Lord a wave offering, just, just let him know, Lord, it's good for me to trust in you. It's good for me to trust in you. Hallelujah. It's right for me to trust in you. Hallelujah. May I never trust more in myself than I do you. Lord, may we never trust our jobs more than we trust you. Lord, may we never trust family more than we trust you. Lord, may we never trust preachers more than we trust you. For it is just right 
it is just good for us to trust you. Hallelujah. It is good for us to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we sing that to him just real softly? I don't walk by. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, that needs to be our confession. I trust in God. I will walk by faith. Come on, that needs to be somebody's confession. Hallelujah. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I trust in God. That needs to be somebody's confession. I trust in God. Come on, hallelujah. You're going through something, but this needs to be your confession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Look at one person, if you don't mind, and just tell him or her, it's good for me to walk by faith and not by my sight. Tell it to one more person. Tell me, it's just good for me. It's just right for me to walk by faith and not by what I see. And let's give God a tremendous hand clap of praise for our Lord, our Savior. Come on, the one, the only Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the risen King. Hallelujah. He that was, he that is, and he that is soon to return. Come on. That's who we're praising this morning. Hallelujah. That's who we're thanking. That's who has changed our lives forever. Amen. And because we walk by faith and not by sight, our lives are better. It's just better to trust in God. I know a lot of folks say this, a lot of folks say that, but you need a personal experience with God. Amen. Even as um, we was worshiping, you know, the Lord just took my mind back. Life is about choices. Life is about cho choices. Whether a person is productive or unproductive, It'll all be determined by choices, the choices that we make. And you know, I thought about it. One of the best choices I ever made, I made some good decisions in my life. I made some jacked up ones too, but the ones that forever changed my life as we worship, even as Dick and Conquer received God's tithes and offering, I thought about it. I thought about a young man shacking with a woman, three small kids, struggling financially, apartment we were living in not big enough for us, cars not dependable, no vision, living from check to check. Come on, just struggling. And when I look back at my vision, I look at Donald's vision at that time, we had no vision for better. We was just simply every day just trying to get up and just trying to make it. Just trying to make it. So often we talk, we just trying to make it with these kids. And the thing that changed our lives, not just getting saved, but willing to be obedient to the scriptures. I'm finna move on, but one of the best decisions and I know a lot is said online, and it will always be said, but one of the best decisions we ever made was to become tithers. That was the best decision I ever made in my life. When I look back at how bad we were struggling, if anybody could have said we can't afford to tithe, it would have been me and Donna because we came up short every week. We really weren't living from check to check because most of the time the check we were waiting on was already spent. So we, 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 it would have been a blessing to live from check to check. But most of the time, we were to the point to where that check is already spent. We, we are starting a new month 
already in the hole from what took place last month. That, that, that was our life. And, and we didn't have no vision of ever getting past it. You see? And the best decision I ever made was to become a faithful tiger. Y'all know Donna testimony. She struggled in the beginning. And uh, finally, she had an experience with God. And I know a lot of said, I know a lot of you, I, I'm not ignorant. I, I, I know a lot of you faithfully come here, but you put your eyes on other things. You listen to other things. And, uh, but that was one of the best choices I ever made. And I have never in almost 30 years ever missed giving God the 10th of all of my increase. I've never missed it. And so it, it's not up here like a preacher just telling you to do it so that I can get your money. That ain't how this church works. I don't know where you come from. That ain't how this church works. I, I don't get all of the tithe. I don't get all of the folk money. And so, uh, but I was tithing faithfully before I ever became a preacher, before I ever became a minister. I became a faithful tither. And uh, it, it, it has been one of the best decisions in my life. And when I did it, I did it regardless of what was going on. I did it regardless of what was going on. And some of us, I'm going to move on. Some of you, you are tithers. But you don't really see the full benefit of it because you are primarily a grudging tither. You give the tithe, but you give it mad, you give it upset, you give it doubting, you give it wondering, you want it back. So I never do that. Some of you don't like this because you, you, you have a problem. You have a problem. Amen. And, and, but we don't force nothing on nobody. Like I said, the best choice I ever made was to become a tither. That was the best decision I ever made. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the, for the service thus far. That, that's, that, I'm just hitting you with truth. The best, one of the best decisions I ever made. And now I look at all that God is doing. You know, and I owe it all to him. Let's give our MC minister right a wonderful hand of praise. Thank God for this woman of God this morning. Thank you for the introduction. We thank God for the prayer by Minister Persons on this morning. And let's give a hand of praise for all of these wonderful ministers. We honor each and every one of you. We thank God for our deacons on this morning. Thank God for Deacon Conquer receiving the tithes, the offering. Amen. We honor our praise team, our musicians on this morning. Come on, y'all. We are blessed. Thank the Lord for our media ministry. We are certainly blessed. And let's take it up for our marriage ministry, even if you're not married. We had a wonderful, wonderful time on yesterday. Really enjoyed ourselves. We honor, amen, First Lady Donna. Thank the Lord for our bishop, Dr. Barry D. Walker. First Lady Kathy this morning. All of the leaders. Let's give a hand of praise for our guests, our visitors. Amen. We're happy to have you. Those that are joining us live, we thank God for our refuge extended family. Wherever you're joining us from, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Amen. Y'all can be seated. We had a good time. I think the media minister will be uploading some pictures uh, from yesterday. We actually went over, I think, our allotted time that I had in mind for us to paint. I had told Don, I said, we'll, we'll paint for maybe an hour, and then I'll come and do this brief teaching. And uh, we have moved on from there. Y'all, we were paying for two hours. <laughs> we were paying for two hours. And, uh, and a lot of folk found out that they truly enjoyed that. They, a lot of people found it to be relaxing. And it relaxed me in the first 15 minutes. It really relaxed me. But after that, you know, when I paint, when I get tired, when I start getting tired, I start missing and messing up stuff. That's right, I ain't no good painter. Hey, Amen. I have to learn when I'm painting. When I get tired, I got to quit. That's it for the day. Uh, but I enjoyed it, you know, and uh, doing it as couples. And we brought forth a powerful teacher. We had fun, but then we had to deal with some stuff, as you often have to do uh, in marriage. I mean, you have to deal with things. And so we just had a wonderful time being with other married couples. And, uh, again, the painting was very, 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 very fun. Amen. How many attended yesterday and you really enjoyed yourself? It was really a good time. Let's give God a praise again for our marriage ministry. <laughs> We honor, amen, is she here? Yeah, we honor Sister Erica on this morning. She, she does our marriage Facebook page. We thank God for her. She does an excellent, excellent job. 
A lot of that information that people think is pastor, it is Sister Erica taking uh, information and wisdom and breaking it down. So much did she do. Uh, people probably think that I have given that to her, but that's God using her. That's her wisdom coming forth. And so we want you to know who are uh, uh, our extended refuge family. Make sure you check out the marriage ministry uh, Facebook page. A lot of information about marriage, a lot of wisdom in reference uh, to marriage. And uh, with that being said, we thank God for our singles. Amen. Come on, ain't no need in y'all single folk looking mean. We thank God for our single folk. Yeah. And if that's something the single ministry would enjoy doing, we need to make that known. If y'all want a paint day, a fun day, you know, we need somebody that's single, that's happy, uh, to light a fire in the singles ministry so that the single ministry can start getting together doing things. Uh, but it's going to take somebody that's excited about being single. It's going to take somebody that's happy. Amen. And uh, I don't know y'all. I don't know if there's anybody in here. I don't know. It's quiet up in there. I, I got one. I got one. I got two. I got. I see two. Uh, uh, I got three. I got, I got four. They. Pop, I got five. I got six eggs. I got. I got seven. Seven. Can, 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 can I get? Can I get eight? Can I get eight? Can I get? Eight? <laughs> I said, can I get eight? Can I get eight? Can I get eight? It's some single there. Like, no, you can't get no eight. No. Nah, <laughs> So one thing it taught us, and I got to move forward, we got excellent youth ministry, nursery ministry. I mean, we just do some wonderful things. But one thing I want to say, uh, if you say, because this came out in the uh, marriage ministry, one thing about being saved is that our life, no matter if you're married, single, young, old, or what have you, this shouldn't be no boring life. Amen. If you saying you saved, and your life is boring, it's something wrong with you. It's something wrong with you. It ain't God. It's the fact that I mean it ain't the church. It's you. You should never be saved living a boring life. Because being saved is not boring. It's the best life a person could ever live. And, and you live it without hurting yourself on purpose every day because that's what alcohol does that's what drugs do that's what sexual immorality does come on you think you having fun you killing yourself you messing up your life you want to have fun you want to enjoy life join us over on this side get saved for real Don't, don't you ever. And see, some folks just sitting there. You the one make people think being saved is boring. If they ask me about you, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to say, he can't blame that on being saved. That man just boring, period. He just stale like that. There are a lot of things you can do as a saved person. And you can do it without sinning. Y'all, I, I, I got to go into this mess. You can do it without sinning. You can go to Vegas. Stay on the strip. Come on. And have yourself a ball. Married and single. Our single ministry can plan a trip to Vegas. Y'all can go out there and have a good time and stay safe. Come on, I know I'm teaching right already. What ain't playing? Uh, come on, this, uh, Lord helping us. This ain't no boring life. My marriage is not a boring marriage. It's not a boring marriage. Me and Doc, that's, that's our responsibility. To have fun, enjoy each other, do some different things, try some things. Me and Don ain't just sitting at the house every day looking at each other get old. Come on, sometimes we got to challenge each other. Let's go try this. Come on, y'all be seated. You know, I used to be a person that everywhere we went, we ate at the same places. And I still ain't just your guru either. 
But me and Donna learned, we said, hey, hey, let, let's try something. Let's go in this place that looked like it's about to fall down and try this. And have had a good time. Just asking for, what is that? That's such and such. I'm going to try that. And just having a good time. Getting together with like-minded people. See, see, look, now don't clap because y'all going to make, make me go longer. You will. You get me really excited. When you get saved, in order for life not to be boring, a lot of it has to do with who you hanging with, who you close with. You got to get with somebody that like having fun like you like having fun. But they know how to do it without sinning. You don't have to sin. But when you come out of sin, you think you do. You think you need the alcohol to cope. I, I, I just need to get, get it in and I loosen up. You don't need it to loosen up. You don't need it to handle things. That's feel like the world just came and I got so much pressure on me. If I don't get a drink, you, you don't need it. You don't need God to sustain you. But never give people the impression that being saved is boring. Some of you, you're in your 60s and 70s. There are things you have never tried. Do it. Do it. Some of you never even driven in a convertible. Rent you a convertible one day. Let the top down. And just, and, and, and just fill the tank up. And then look at whoever with you and say, where are we going? I don't, just drive. Just drive. You don't always need, per se, a destination. You just need to know we about to enjoy ourselves. And allow the, what, what year we in? Being led by what? The Holy Spirit. Spirit led. Holy Spirit will put you in the standing wheel under it and just tell you, just go. And you'll land in some places, looking at some things. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I got to say this, and I got to go to this message. One of the most beautiful places we ever seen. And I thought this city wasn't really about nothing. Years ago, Arizona. All right, what is, what's in Arizona? We were just riding. Like, what's in Arizona? just got out ride. I got ready to turn down a road. Desert road. Seen cactuses. I never seen cactuses in the desert like that. I said, Donna, I'm going to turn down here. She said, oh, no, you're not with me. <laughs> I said, we're just going to ride that. Thing. Look. <laughs> I lied then. We can't do that one. <laughs> See, that was back then. But we went to this place, and I got to move on. We just drove down looking for a certain restaurant, put it in, and it took us to this place. I don't even know the name of it. I want to say Sarasota or something. I don't know. I could be wrong. Y'all, we got down in what was a valley. We had to pull over. We literally had to pull over. My eyes couldn't believe what I was seeing. We was in a valley surrounded around mountains, but the mountain was red. It looked like somebody painted this. It didn't even look real. I said, Donna, we got to just pull up. I said, the, I said, God is great. And we got down there in that little city, got out and just surrounded by these red, clay-looking mountains. Just beautiful, beautiful. God didn't save you for you to live a boring life. He didn't do it. He didn't do it, saints. That's somebody rainbow right there. He did not do it. And if you feel like your life is taking a turn, starting to be boring, you're just going through routines and motions. That's your fault. You need to enjoy life. And don't blame boringness on children. These kids will hear them get out of here. I, got, I always got to do something for these kids. Look, you remember what I tell you, and I got to go to the message. You remember what I tell you? You don't do that because UPS didn't drop them kids off. You had fun getting them. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to have fun with them. We blame a lot of things on being bored. Stop that. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your small children. But we just can't get up and just do it. That ain't your season. Your children are small. 
And sometimes you want to be alone. No, you take them children with you. And y'all learn together. You show them kids how to explore, how to see things and do things. Some stuff we we we'll knock it and ain't never tried it. How many never been how many have never been fishing? Raise your hand if you've never been fishing before. Raise your hand real high. Something as simple as fishing. Try it. You may love it. How many ever played tennis? How many ever played tennis? Okay. How many liked it? Gotta gotta do some stuff. That's all I'm saying. How, how many golfers do we have? How many golfers? How many like golf? Oh, we got some women that like golf. Raise your hand, sister. Yeah, raise your hand if you like golfing. Well, we got some single. We have single sisters <laughs> who love golf. I'm not lying. <laughs> I want to help these singles out. We have here. <laughs> let, let, let me do a commercial. We have here. <laughs> see, these brothers over there love the golf. They know they like, what? <laughs> we have here in the city of Newton, Georgia. Some single sister females who love to golf. Let's get God to pray. We got to go in this word. Look how we just had such a good time. Because this word about to be different. The word had me up last night repenting. Forgive me, Lord. I got to do better. Amen? Woo! Quiet it now. Quiet it now. Donna, you might get some phone calls. About them single sisters. That really needed... Uh, to, to be said. Uh, there are some things that you have never tried that you, that you may do it and you may just be what they call a natural, just somebody who, I, I love this, love this. How many love uh, shopping? How many love shopping? How, how many love just going looking at things? You may, you may buy, you may, but you just love seeing things. You just love shopping. How many, all right. How, how many folk love cars? How, how many of you have any car enthusiasts? Folk that you like cars? You just a car person? All right, all right. Anybody got any particular car you would love to drive one day? You would love to drive? Uh, can y'all name it real quick? We got to go on. I, I am all Lord. Have mercy. Uh huh. A Lamborghini. You know, we went to Las Vegas. And uh, I don't know if they still do it, but they had a. a did they still do that? Well, you could drive any one of these fancy cars. For I think two hundred fifty dollars an hour, and and some now, 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 now see, that's when some of you boy ain't nobody gonna give you no Lamborghini and you put down no ten dollar, <laughs> and then got no fault insurance and want to drive somebody Lamborghini. <laughs> see, see some of y'all I'm exposing some of y'all two hundred fifty. You driving a Lamborghini? Y'all seen that new SUV Lamborghini? I seen that thing pass by. I said, "Demar told us what the world." Somebody else, real quick. We gotta move on. A white Corvette. A white Corvette. Uh huh. A thirty-two four. So Jill done went. Was anybody in here born in thirty-two? <laughs> anybody? Okay. Uh huh. Sister, Sister Caroline. A Porsche Cayenne. Okay, I got that. No, a Cayenne. I got a Cayman. I got a Cayman. I was say, oh, you need to ride them down it. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. I got a Cayman. Uh huh. That Porsche out there. Okay. I, I want to drive a Maserati. <laughs> it's past appreciation month. I want to drive a Maserati that's red, that's black with red interior. He said, "Ask, and it shall be given." Oh, well, I want to take my baby in a Maserati. So it's Keisha. 65 Chevy Mustang. Y'all, we got to go. I'm going to get three more. Uh-huh. I like because some of y'all like older cars. I like that. A 69 Ford Mustang. I'm going to get you that. I'm going to get you that. Y'all, I'm going to get it. 
Li listen, listen. They make them model cars. No. They <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm gonna get you the real thing. I'm gonna get you that. I'm gonna get you that. Especially what I'm finna teach today. I'm gonna get you that. Go to Proverbs 12. What I'm saying is, like some of y'all naming things, sometimes depending on what it is, it won't cost you anything but to show your license, your insurance, and you can test drive some of these cars. I once thought I wanted a car to I test drove it. And I said, this don't fit right. I don't like it. But then I told him, I said, man, I really enjoy it. I said, I thought I want it. I said, but I don't really like the way it drives, but I never really knew. Then you can sit in some cars and you just feel like, man, this was made for me. You know, but it don't cause you anything to go look at the cars, sometimes even to drive them. And that can be a day where you just had fun. Some of you, the older cars, y'all need to go attend some of these car shows. Attend some of these car shows. Amen. Look at them on TV. Once seen on TV, a, a car sold for over $3 million. Mm -hmm. The man that bought it put it in the uh, back of a thing and took it right to a museum. Proverbs 12 and 22, but, but, but here's the point, and I got to go to this message. Uh, that, that being saved, being a Christian, this is not a boring life. If you're listening, this is not a boring life. I don't know who you're looking at claiming to be one of us, but if they really got a boring life, they are not us. They're not one of us. This is not a boring life. Amen. Proverbs 12 and 22. Write that down. 1969 Ford Mustang. All right. We'll restore it ourselves now. Okay. It may not come off that showroom floor. We'll work on it together. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's part of getting the old car. And if you want to just buy one and they've done everything, that's good. But if you want to kind of build it and... And that's a project. That's what I'm saying. Man, y'all Y'all need to be hard on her like this sometime. Y'all... We're going to build it together. What we can do. Amen. That's right. Somebody gave me a loud. That's right. Proverbs 12, 22. You see, based on this, I, I, I got to come through. All right. Proverbs 12, 22. We've been talking about how it's impossible for God to lie. We've been talking about he cannot lie. But notice, we being human... Sometimes we lie, but we never want to practice lying. We never want to be the folk who love lying. Notice Proverbs 12 and 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. You know, a lot of folk. Talk about what's an abomination to God. A lot of folk name things that God hate that he takes disgust in. Notice, according to Solomon, or the proverb writer, in Proverbs 12 and 22, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. Again, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. My subject is simple this morning. Lying lips. Lying lips. I'm going to deal with lying lips. Lying lips. Let's give God a praise for our subject if y'all don't mind. Mm -hmm. Lying lips. Three brief definitions of what it means to lie. Number one, it is simply not telling the truth. Not telling the truth. A liar is a person who does not tell the truth. Listen to me carefully. He or she practices not telling the truth. He or she loves not telling the truth. 
And again, we see that lying lips are a person who does not tell the truth is an abomination to God. Number two, to lie is simply to speak what's false. When a person lies, again, he or she is speaking what is false. Or it is to have a false tongue. It is to utter falsehood. So again, to, to lie is speaking what is false. And then finally, to lie and the root meaning of lie is to deceive. And so lying has to do with somebody who is being deceitful. Again, it is not telling the truth. It is speaking what is false. And then finally, it is being deceitful. And as Christians, we want to live up to what the name truly means. Because to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. Now, we're never going to be uh, as Christ is fully. Come on, somebody. Because we are, again, human. We are limited beings. I, I, I quoted it earlier and have been teaching on it. Again, the Bible says in Hebrews 6 and 18 that it is impossible for God to lie. Now, if we tell the truth this morning about that, we all know it's not impossible for us to lie. You know that. Some of you did it yesterday. You know it's not impossible for you to lie. And if you tell somebody that, you just lied. Come on, somebody. We cannot say what Paul said about God when he wrote to Titus that God cannot lie. That's something we have no claim to say. We could never say that I've been saved for such and such amount of time and I cannot lie. Well, you just lie. Because it is possible for every one of us to lie. But as a Christian, we should be striving, listen to me, saints, every day to be more like Christ. We should be striving every day so that people will see Christ in us. Oh, come on. I know it's going to be a little tight, but people should see Christ in us. Good to have a Bible. Good to have a cross on if that's what you want to do. But it's bigger than the cross around your neck. Come on, somebody. It's bigger than you toting a Bible. It's bigger than you quoting a scripture. People need to see Christ in us. They need to see his characteristics in us as we grow. Now, when we first get saved, they may not see a whole lot of Christ in us because Christ is getting a whole lot of stuff out of us. And so, come on, somebody. So we're in that process of dying to ourselves, learning not to cuss, learning not to get revenge, learning how to forgive, learning how, I'm preaching good, to let things go, not to stay mad over silly things. We're learning. We're learning. But as we mature, the main thing we should want is for people to see Christ in us. Come on, to see us living the word. If you're taking notes, not only can we tell a lie, but you can also live a lie. You can be deceptive in who you claim to be. If you're telling people you are a Christian. But your lifestyle is not of that. Which is consistent with biblical teaching. You being deceptive. You're, uh -oh, you're claiming to be something that you're not. Because a Christian doesn't practice that. Come on. We're going to be a little tight. And listen, this is not just for the stranger that we meet. 
but people we live with who see us more than anybody. Come on. Come on. And people you live with, they're going to see sides of you that at times you do all you can to hide these things from others. Be oh, yeah, because we're all flawed in some sense. Yeah, we do. We all have weaknesses. But it should be that even people who live with you know you are striving every day to be like Christ. No, she is not perfect, but she does strive to be like Christ. Yeah, she is a Christian. I know she is born again. Am I right? Because in today's world, people claim to be Christians who are not even trying to live. Did y'all hear what I said? Not even trying to live according to the word. And while I'm here, one thing that causes some young people to stumble is having parents who are in the church, but they're not the church. They're not living at home what they're claiming at church. Come on, you're doing an injustice to your child. Your child see you as a leader, a minister at church, but you're anything but a minister at home. Come on, you sing the praises of God at church, but you have a foul and cussing mouth at home. How dare you raise your children cussing at them, letting them see you do things that when they come here, they're going to hear the word saying, you shouldn't do that. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Somebody walk up, you say, how you doing, man of God? And your child said, now, who? But dad is a drunk. So we can be deceitful in our life. It's quiet. And one thing I don't want to be, one thing I don't want to be is a stumbling block. I want to see my loved ones who are not saved. I want to see them saved. I want to see them saved. I can't make them get saved. But I believe if I live the life in front of them, I'll make them think twice about giving their life to Jesus. Just off of the walk that they see in me. Y'all know that's true. Kinfolk especially watch us at times that we really don't know they're watching you. They're watching you. And, and they may not say anything to you, but if you are a single who's keeping yourself pure, you're being chased with your life, even though your cousin know you're getting offers from men, but she know she's holding on. You encourage your cousin, whether she say it to your face or not. She's watching how God is blessing you. But think if you're doing the opposite. Come on. This is a good word. And it's a need for word for the body of Christ. When we start naming that we are Christian, you saying something. In my pre-message, you saying you Christian, people ought to see you enjoying life. You gonna have your child but they ought to say about you I know she going through a whole lot but you can't tell it. You can't tell it. Come on somebody. What are some reasons why a Christian would lie? I ain't got time to deal with all of them. What are some reasons why a person professing to be a Christian would lie? 
What, what are some reasons? I, 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 I just want to mention a couple. Number one, we sometimes lie out of fear. We, you, you, you can be in a situation where you lie. You don't tell the truth because you fear the unwanted consequences of speaking truth. Come on. You could get back $4,000 more. That, that, that's what your tax person tells you. But you've got to be able to say such and such, such and such. And, and then it's up to you. Lord have mercy. I need that money. I need that money. And if I tell the truth, it's going to cost me $4,000. God understand that we, I, I need. This is God. You can't say nothing is God that's causing you to be deceitful. I'm teaching right. But sometimes we fear unwanted things that may come if I tell some folk live like that. If I tell the truth, I'll lose benefits. See, see, these are just some reasons. You know, Abraham went into a city and was afraid to tell the people that Sarah was his wife. He feared that they would kill him to have her. So he told Sarah, he said, just tell them that you are my sister. He feel consequences. Now, y'all just keep saying that like that. Sometimes we, you will lie. But it is always best for a Christian to tell the truth. Come on. I had a person went to this church, a couple, and I don't know, I, 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 it, man, it had to be two, three years that I continued, and I ain't going to call their name, y'all know I don't do that, to refer to this person as husband and wife. Husband and wife, good to see your wife, good to see your husband, How, how's your husband, how's your wife? Get in a meeting and they start arguing with me, not with me, with each other. And, they, and, and, and the man said, Pastor, first of all, let, let, let me just tell you this. This is the reason I divorced her years ago. And, and Pastor, I don't know if you know this or not. Now, we never did get remarried. And I said, no, I said, nah. I said hold, hold, hold up now. I, I said, I, I, no, I don't know that. I said, I thought you. He said, oh, no, we, we still ain't married. That's being deceitful. If you're telling folk you married and you shacking, that's being deceitful. Even if you put on one of these. That's being deceitful. Woo! Sometimes we lie because we fail. We are not able to make good on what we say. You say, Pastor, I didn't mean to. I had all the intentions to do what I said. Don't matter about your intention, you didn't do it. That's a lie. That's the reason we strive to start service at 1015. Because that's what we say. We say we start at 1015. If we start at 1016, we starting on a lie. If we start at 1014, we starting on a lie. Don't matter about what the, the mics weren't working. Don't start on a lie. Get up talking till the mics get to working. Well, we were waiting on the praise team. Don't wait on nobody. No. Do what we said we would do. This ain't just for main church. This is for leaders meeting. This is when auxiliaries meet. You tell folk y'all going to start at 6, but y'all start at 630. Don't let me find that out. Or let me find it out. You won't have any more meetings. We don't start on a lie. And then I hated this thing. That people, when you have something. Because what time are we starting? Some of y'all know where I'm going. We starting at three. At that CP time. CP. 
CP. What was CP? Color people time. Which means four. No, let me straighten you. All color people don't lie. Come on. All, all, all blacks don't lie. All African Americans don't lie. Whatever y'all call now. Whatever you got. Hey, I'm not a colored. But what it teaches you is that you can build a reputation of being a liar. Now, I got to move on, but, but some of you, that's you. You tell folk the cookout going to start at four. All we tell you is starting at four. We tell you to bring the baked beans, and you showing up with the baked beans at 530. Some of y'all don't like this type of teaching. Sometimes we lie because of jesting or inappropriate language known as joking. See, the book of Ephesians warns against saints doing things that Paul said is not fitting for a saint. See, there are some things you used to do before you got saved. It's like being overweight. Don't there, please don't y'all be sensitive. That ain't that ain't that ain't coming. Some people are overweight. That ain't not a knock to nobody. Every, everybody skinny ain't healthy. Everything that's skinny is not attractive to some folk. But I'm trying to make an example. When you use certain words, you can just tell folk like, Ooh, who is he? Oh. Come on. <laughs> but when you, I'm making a point. When you overweight and then you lose weight. There are a lot of things, though, you still may like it. You can't wear it anymore. It doesn't fit. That's all. It doesn't fit you anymore. That doesn't look good on you anymore. It looked good on you when you was in the world. It looked good on you when you were not saved. Yeah, I was used to you talking like that when you was a sinner, when you was half high, out of your mind, drunk, or on something. But now that you're saying you were born again Christian, that doesn't fit. It should be certain things that when it come out of our mouth, we should know immediately this doesn't become a Christian. This doesn't fit. This doesn't sound right out of the mouth of somebody who say they living for God. Blessing and cursing shouldn't come out of the same mouth. Come on, somebody. Y'all know I'm preaching good this morning. We have to be kept. That don't fit anymore. You were known as a person cussing all the time before you got saved. But if you continue cussing all the time, yet you telling people you're a Christian, it's not going to fit. So is jesting or joking. Sometimes some of us lie because we get to playing too much. Amen. And so we have to be careful. Amen. And then finally, we lie sometimes because we, I don't know if y'all ever heard of the term jumping on the bandwagon. It means doing what others do, saying what others say. Y'all know sometimes we lie because we repeat something we've heard, thinking it to be true, but it's not true. See, if somebody tell you something that ain't true, and then you start telling other people what they told you. It don't matter that you thought it was truth. You are now guilty of spreading lies. I didn't mean to hurt nobody. It doesn't matter. That's why we have to be careful when we say a thing. Where did you get that from? And everything you see on TV ain't true. Everything you hear on the news is not true. And here we are as Christians repeating something 
Uh-oh, it's quiet. I told y'all how the message was going. Somebody called you like, oh, hey, you heard the news. I ain't heard nothing. I've been busy. So-and-so died. Lord, have mercy. You know, I seen them a couple of months ago. They looked so good. Yeah, they don't even know what happened. They just up and died. You can't wait to get off the phone to call somebody. Did you know so-and-so died? Next thing you know, we done had four, five phone calls about a person dying who's still living. All because you heard something and you started running with it. Even in church, be careful of the gossip you hear or you receive. It may not be true. It may not. And then folks say, now I got this from a good source. Can, can I tell you something about your source? Your source has lied before. Then people say, this came out the horse's mouth. Then you finally talked to the horse. They said, you said, and I didn't say that like that. They telling a lie. That is not how I said that. Well, what did you say? This is what I said. Now the person is running around telling folk they got it out the horse's mouth, but they took it out of context and they lying. It's quiet in the house. See, I don't want to speak lies and I don't want to live a lie. Let me show you why. John 8, we finna get into it. Y'all just give me a few more moments. You have to teach like this. Because you got folks saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Pa Pastor, that just seemed to be something so, so small. But, but you, you, ain't, you ain't listening. Lying lips are an abomination to God. How can that be seen as small? Well, Pastor, you know one thing about me. I don't tell no big lies. Y'all you, you, you know how folks here, oh, he told a big black lie versus a, a little small white lie. We don't want to be known for lying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Notice why. Notice why. Woo. Help me, Jesus. Notice why. See, because, again, as Christians, we want to be what? Christ-like. And, and, and if somebody has... has, has has been lying and nobody has told me. Okay, let, let me say that. Why are you preaching that? I told her it was a lie. She done went to power. Ain't nobody came to me. Ain't nobody said nothing about nobody lying. Okay? I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God. So don't you show up this morning thinking, no, this being said, no, this being said because God want us to hear it. He want us to hear it. Okay? John 8. This is the reason we don't want to do it. First of all, before I even go any far, has anybody in here ever lied? Yes. Let me just see by a show of hands. Anybody in here ever lied? Okay, hands down. I want to I wanna ask, but I ain't. I want to ask how many have told a lie this month, but I, I ain't going to do it. John 8, John 8, I want to do it, but I'm not. I, I don't want to put you on the spot like that and put myself on the spot like that. John 8 and 44. This is the reason. Listen carefully to the scriptures. Listen carefully to the scriptures. Because some folk would tell you that not only are they liars, but they're good at lying. Yeah, some folk good at lying. I said some people are good at being deceptive. Anybody used to be like that before Christ? You were good at lying. You, you, you knew how to just, don't, y'all ain't got to be, I said before Christ, you, you just good at lying. You, you knew how to watch everything you said. Mm-hmm. John 8, let me show you why it's so serious. Here's Jesus talking to a group of Jews, to a group of religious people. To a group of not only religious people, but he talking to people who are responsible for teaching other people. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, these folk were not just religious, but sometimes people miss it. Their responsibility was to teach others. Teach them what, Pastor? How to be godly. And notice what Jesus had to say to folk responsible for teaching other people. John 8 and 44. You are of your father, the devil. 
the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. Y'all better listen. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. And you know, we have a saying, or I have a saying, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Show you right. But are you? Are you like the devil? Do you have the devil characteristics? When the devil opened his mouth, he lied. And if there's any truth in anything he utters, it is in order to cover it with lies in order to deceive the person he's speaking to. Why? Because he is a liar. And when we get saved and get saved right, I, I don't want characteristics that, that exemplify I'm of the devil. Here come that liar. You, you basically saying, here come that devil. Now you ain't calling him the devil, but if you lie all the time, you acting like the devil. Y'all don't, it's quiet. Let me just stand here, sing man's gamma, just teach it and, 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 and let it do what it do. Look at Revelation. Mm, the Bible said when he speaks a lie, did y'all hear that? He speak of his own resources. For he, in other words, he can't be nothing but a liar. Woo! The devil can't be nothing but a liar. Here's the wonderful news. Even if you in church or you listening and you practice lying, you love lying. You know the difference between you and the devil? You can change. Come on, somebody. I said you have the opportunity to change, whereas the devil will always be who he is. That's a liar. And, and God is teaching this because some of us need to stop lying. Stop being deceptive. Lying messes up marriages. Spouses have to learn to be truthful with one another. Speak the truth to each other out of love. You don't speak the truth to hurt or kill nobody. You speak the truth because you love them. Spouses who lie to each other don't really love each other. Parents who lie to their children don't really love their children. Children, y'all have to learn at a young age to tell the truth. But I'm going to get in trouble. Yeah, but it's best to tell the truth. You said lie not to get whoopings. And if you had parents like I did, sometimes they'll trick you. To me, I call it trick you. You tell me the truth. It don't mean you're going to get no whooping, but I need to know the truth. I did it. Go get me that. I'm going to tell you. But, but you said I wouldn't get it. <laughs> You said I want to get a little more. <laughs> Come on. You have, and, and listen, children, because I'm teaching right. When you grow up, you need for your parent, because you're young, foolish is bound in the heart of a child. Part of being a child is, for some children, is telling lies. The reason your parent needs you to tell the truth is because if anything ever happens, they need to know that you ain't known for lying. She, she just don't make things up. She just don't lie to be lied. If she told me, if she told me that he touched her, I can't just call her a liar. We got to see. Tell your parents the truth, children. Be honest with your parents. But Pastor, they'll whoop me. Yeah, you might get that butt toe up. But just let that teach you. Don't lie the next time. 
Don't lie the next time. Mama, I broke it. I broke it. Sometimes they'll let you off with a good stern one, depending on what you broke. <laughs> Revelation. It's good teaching. It's good teaching. Lying don't do nothing but create a whole lot of confusion. And if you're here today and you think, well, Pastor, I, shoot, I tell a lie, but it's getting me ahead. You don't realize you're setting yourself up for complete failure. Your lies are going to come back on you. They used to tell us growing up, we used to lie like, if you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie to cover that lie. To eventually, you forget the lie you told the last time. That's how police get folk. They get them in separate rooms. Where y'all coming from? We coming from the house. You know, where y'all coming from? Oh, oh, we just left a cookout. Oh, he don't lie. One thing about telling the truth is that you never have to be nervous. You never have to think. See, when you lie, you got you got to just sit there and. That's how you know some people lying. You ask them a simple question. And let me tell you something that's notorious of some liars. Where you been? That's real simple. Where you been? Where you been? Some liars. So you asking me where I been? Yeah, but I really want to know why you buying time saying where you been. It's no need to repeat the question. You try, you thinking. But it's always easy to tell the truth or say nothing. Police pulled me over here. You know why I pulled you over? Yeah, I was going a little fast. I ain't going to tell them how I felt. I may have, maybe didn't look or what. Police pulled me over. Uh, it had been a while, though. But he said, he said, you know why I stopped you? I said, yeah. I said, I was going a little too fast. He said, man, you were moving in this car. I said, yeah. He said, I'm clocking you at like 85, almost 90. And I said, yeah. I said, I ain't been too long, got this car material. I just hit it. And um, yeah, uh, you, you're right. He said, you know I'm going to have to give you a ticket. And I was on my way to church. Oh, God. <laughs> Had that big old ring on. <laughs> yeah, I, I started to, before the police even came up there, Shane, I started to take the ring. I forgot to take the ring. <laughs> Because some police, they think you got money. They think, you know, they see, y'all don't, now some of us know them. People see you drive a certain car, they think, oh, he can afford it. They do this sometimes, I'm getting off. They, they do it sometimes when they fix your car. Depending on what your car, oh, they got it. No, uh-uh, don't do me like that. But anyway, he was, he said, I'm going to give you a ticket. I, I, I said, I understand. I, I, I said, hey, I said, uh, I said, can you have some mercy? Can you drop it to a certain limit so it don't go on my speed, on my insurance and stuff and, and, and do that and stuff? He, he said, you know what? He said, I'll do that for you since she was honest. He said, I'll do it. But some of us know we speed, and then you trying to argue. Why you stop me? <laughs> Ma'am, you're going 65 and a 35. Yeah, it, it, it's because I'm black. <laughs> oh, black people can't even go 10 miles over. Don't say nothing. Don't lie. Lying makes things worse. Amen? Notice, <laughs> Revelation 21, got to speed up. Revelation 21. Yeah, lying, I'm, I'm trying to, lying makes things worse. It's best to tell the truth. Notice Revelation 21, 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexual immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, these are some bad folks. And all liars shall have their part in a lake. This ain't no lake with fish. Which burns with fire and brimstone. Oh, somebody shout all liars. Somebody shout all liars. Will end up in hell. Do y'all realize that? All liars are going to hell according to the Bible. 
Listen to what I'm saying. Those who practice lying. Those who love lying. Those who have not repented from lying. All of them. All liars. I don't want to be doing anything that I know will carry me to hell. Come on, somebody. I, I ain't got but a couple more scriptures. I want to do nothing that I know going to carry me to hell. And then I'm in the hell with rapists, people who done molested, murdered. And, and it ain't going to be like folks saying, somebody asks you, why are you here? It, it, that, 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 that ain't hell. Hell ain't no place you down to having no conversation with people. Nah, you, 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 you watching too many movies. Oh, what got you here? You, you, yeah. <laughs> set somebody on fire and ask them. Don't, don't set nobody on fire. Don't set nobody on fire. But if you see somebody on fire, them people ain't got time to talk to you. Them people hurting. They, they burning. But imagine going to hell for lying. Not telling the truth. Being deceitful. Lying to get a position. You got the job, but you lied on somebody. You lied, your lie got somebody fired because you knew you were next in line and you got the job. And you actually think that that job going to benefit you. It may benefit you for a moment. It may benefit you in the ways you thought it would benefit you. You got a big increase, but watch your life. You are going to reap what you sowed. See, it's quiet in the house. I know it. Go to Exodus 23. A few more scriptures. Y'all hang in here. I'm still within my time. Exodus 23. And, and see, there are some churches you, you are never going to get a message like this. What did he preach about today? Lord, Hammer, let me tell you. Lying lips. Exodus 23 and 21. This is what the Lord taught. Moses to teach the Israelites from the beginning as he was raising them up to be his people, to be a nation. God himself knew one thing would hurt the nation. He knew one thing would damage the family because Israel as a nation, are y'all still listening to me? It's still Israel as a family. It is still Israel as a society. One thing that hurts our society is the downplaying of lies. Like lies don't hurt people. Come on, this hurting the society. The fact that politicians feel like it's okay to just lie to people. Just, lie, just, just tell them if you vote for me, I'm going to do this. They feel it's okay for you to cast your vote for, for them then to get in office and not even try to do what they, what they ran on. Your whole campaign was about this. And you feel that's okay. See, it's messing up society. Fake news is messing up society. Social media lies are messing up society. You can't just get on the internet and listen to anybody. Don't give liars your time. This person is known for spreading lies, keeping mess going, and that's your favorite show. Club Baby. You like looking at Club Baby, and basically it's all about lying and keeping mess going. Now, you're supposed to be a Christian, and all they doing on Club Baby, it, now I know what it is, I ain't calling names. All they doing... On Club Baby is is spreading rumors, telling lies. Y'all don't y'all oh you know why they do it? Because lying sales. Some of us lit, lit, literally sit around listening to who's sleeping with who in Hollywood, who she know who in Ho These folk get paid to put out lies. And when a society is built on lies, I know I'm teaching good. That society going to fall. America going to fall. We have our date. Don't you listen to false prophecy. America has its date to fall. Babylon is going down. Because whenever you turn from God's ways, you're going to fall. 
Every powerful nation that went against God. Even the Bible say all nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. And America is not exempt. Look at all the lying that's promoted. And see, if you ain't careful as a Christian, that spirit get on you where you feel it's okay to lie. But it's not. That's what I'm standing bold teaching. Exodus 23 and 1. I'm, I'm standing bold teaching. Look at Exodus 23 and 1. Here they are from the beginning, teaching the nation, teaching the family. You shall not circulate. Y'all, Exodus 23 and 1. What'd I say? Okay. Exodus 23, 1. 1. Is that uno? Uno. Exodus 23, uno. Can't go no farther. Exodus 23, uno. Doors. Dose. What is it? Dose. What's it? Trace. Quattro. That brother Chris back there like he fluent. <laughs> Bro, that brother Chris ain't skipped the beer. Oh no, no, Trey, come Trey. Right there, man, they got that thing. Exodus 23 and 1, we close. We need this word. We need this word. You shall not circulate. You shall not circulate. You shall not spread. A false report. You shall not circulate. You shall not spread a false report. Now because something is true, that's not a reason to gossip. Well, it's, it's the truth. You, you don't need to be spreading that. But we certainly don't want to be known for circulating. Listen at this. A false report. We, 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 we don't want to be known for that. Go back to Proverbs 12. Oh, Lord. Proverbs 12. I'm moving very fast. Proverbs 12. Now nah, I'm going to go ahead and move fast so, so I can get it. I appreciate you. Proverbs 12. No, I appreciate you. I appreciate lovers of the word. Proverbs 12. Look back at verse, verse 22. Lying lips. Oh, an abomination to the Lord. He hated. He's disgusted by lying lips. Why is that? Let me show you again. Let me back it up. Let the word back itself up. Flip back to Proverbs 6. Well, God, God is a loving God. He can't hate anything. No, no, you, you, you've been misinformed. You've been misinformed. There are things God hate. I said there are things God hate. Tell your neighbor, don't be on. God's hate list. Tell somebody else, don't get on. God's hate list. Look at somebody else and say, did you know that God reveals in the Bible he has a hate list? I don't want to be on God's hate list. Some of you acting like you knew. You didn't know God had a hate list. Look at it. Proverbs 6. In verse 16. These six things. The Lord what? These six things. The Lord what? The Lord what? Now how we Christian doing what God hate? Somebody going to think, think, think the rest of the day before you talk. Yeah, we 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 gonna think, and we need to. This word coming. This word coming to help. These six things. Why does God use Solomon to reveal them to us? He wants us to know what he hates, so that if somebody tells you it's all right, you already know. Oh no, God hate that. If lying will build your career, you do it. That's wrong. That's wrong. If lying will get you what you want, I don't care what them preachers say. Girl, you better lie. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. And, and when we tell lies and know it, the more mature we are, we need to be quick to repent. 
if you lied to somebody, there are times you not only need to repent, but you need to let that person know I lied. I told you a lie. What I said to you was, was, was false. I didn't tell the truth when you asked me that. Now, I ain't saying you got to go back 20 years because you might, you might really cause some trouble. Yeah, Proverbs 6. Now, drop down to verse 19. Yeah, not telling you calling nobody on 20 years. You remember that time you asked me who stole your ring and all that? <laughs> you may, some stuff you may want to just go ahead and leave that alone. Because <laughs> some of are going to be calling for all day. <laughs> but going forward, you know, if we tell a lie, repent. Repent. Just as quick as you said, just say, oh, oh, oh I, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Let me fix that. Let me get that right. Notice verse 19. Now remember in verse 16, he said, these 16 the Lord hate. We drop down to verse 19. A false witness who speaks what? Lies. A false witness who speak what? Lies. A false witness who speak what? Lies. Notice a false witness will speak what? Lies. Why is it important for us not to be a false witness? I don't have time to go there because I'm going to one more scripture and be done. It's because as a Christian, we should be true witnesses. The whole thing about being a Christian is to be a true witness. I do got time to go there. Proverbs 14. Yeah, I do, because some of y'all look. Proverbs 14. Remember what he said in Acts 1. We got one more scripture and I'm done. Remember what he said in Acts 1 and 8. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be what? You shall be what? You shall be what? You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part. Wherever I send you, I'm sending you to be a true witness. If I gave you a job on Yamaha, get over there Yamaha and be a true witness. If I raise you up in the business world, you run that business, you be a true witness. If I take you to college and I raise you up, you get on that college campus and you be a true witness. Wherever, come on, wherever I send you. You be a true witness. We cannot be of God, have his spirit, and we are false witness. But notice what's powerful about being a true witness. And I got one more scripture and we done. Proverbs 14 and 25. Notice what this scripture says. A true witness delivers souls. A true witness delivers souls. When we true witness it, we can help people. You can help people by being a true witness. You know what some of our families need? More true witnesses. I said, you know what some of our families need? More of true witnesses. People who are not just quoting the scripture, but they are living by the scriptures that they quote. They are not perfect, but they're not hypocrites either. They're living this life. They're striving to walk right. Come on, somebody. And we need more of that in our family. Let it start with us. You start being a true witness. You start living right around them. You start talking right. You start doing right. And it'll get contagious. It'll get on somebody. If men start being true witness, other men will desire to get saved. Other men will see the blessing of being a true witness. I'm preaching hard in the close. In Proverbs 22, he closed by saying that his delight is in those who deal truthfully. Yeah, God hate lying lips. They are an abomination. But his delight is in those who deal truthfully. If we want to please God, one way we do so is scribing to tell the truth. Scribing to be a true witness. Why is that important? Proverbs 16 and I'm done. Good word. Proverbs 16 and I'm done. Proverbs 16. Some of us don't work on jobs where everybody around that line and circulating fault is just a bad atmosphere. The world call it toxic. Folk just lying on each other. People just slandering each other. But if God puts you on that job and you know all of that's going on, you go ahead and be the light. You go ahead and be the light. You go ahead and be that one that, that stands out. That they tell folk, no, nah, she ain't going to get involved in y'all mess. She ain't going to keep all that mess going. What she say to one person, she'll say the same thing to another. Because liars are also known as being two-faced people. They go over here and say one thing. 
But then they right over here saying something totally different. You two faced it. Proverbs 16. Why do we want to deal truthfully? Because when we deal truthfully, when we are true witnesses, we are his delight. God delights in us. He, he, he knows we, we, we are not uh, perfect, but he delights in us striving to tell the truth. Hey, yeah, yeah, four, four things. Oh, it's so hard to be blessed. Stop lying. It ain't hard to be blessed. You just got to strive to do right. And what are he talking about today? Just strive to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Proverbs 16, 17. Got to go. Proverbs 16, 16 and 7. 16 and 7. 16 and 7. 16 and 7. What y'all say that word a while ago? Uno. What is seven? Siete. Did I say that right? Siete. Okay. Pastor Cocker speaking a little Spanish today. Proverbs 16 and Siente. When a man weighs, please the Lord. Woo! See, the only one got happy for who's striving to please him. Because you know in striving to please God, good stuff going to happen for me. You can't strive to please God without him blessing you, without him rewarding you. When a man weighs, please the Lord. He makes, God makes his enemy for want to kill you, for want to harm you. God said, because your ways please me, I'm going to make them be at peace. I'm going to make folk bless you that I know don't like you. I'm going to make folk do good by you who want to do wrong. Come on, and I'm done. Yeah, that's somebody rhema. God going to do it. God going to do it because your ways please him. Look at somebody and say, don't, don't be, be a person who practices a love's lying. And come on, let's stand to our feet and give God a praise for our subject. Lying lips. Come on, somebody. Speak the truth. Come on, somebody. Speak the truth. Hallelujah. Speak the what? Truth. How many want to go higher? How many got goals? How many got a vision? How many got plans? But listen to me, saints. We live in a world now where people will do whatever to try to get to where they want to be. We got to show folk there are still some people who have integrity about how they go about doing things. I'm not a lying preacher. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. We're going to tell the truth. We're going to be a church known for standing on truth. And this church has stood on truth for, for a lot of years. We've been through some things, but we, we, we strive to stand on truth. We strive not to lie about money, not to lie about what we do. All the money going to the preacher, it, that, that's a lie. Stop telling that lie. If you ever come to a service, and some of you will skip them because you know this. If you ever come to a service and the money is going to me, they're going to tell you that. They're going to tell you they're receiving an offering for me. You won't hurt me by not giving in that offering. No, don't clap. You're going to hurt yourself. But we're not going to stand up here and tell you no lie. Amen? Amen. We're going to be a church that, that tells the truth. We tell y'all we building and doing what we doing. And we doing it debt free. We're not lying to y'all. Everything we do, we're going we gonna to strive to do it debt free. Amen. Amen. You should love being a part of a church that's striving to stand on truth, to teach truth, to live truth. That starts with me as a leader of this church. That starts with me. I don't understand why folk would want to go sit up under a known liar. You don't sit there and listen to a liar preach. No, pastor ain't perfect, but I ain't. Oh, I got integrity. I got integrity. I'm not going to take something from you that I shouldn't take from you by deceit. And then think that I'm climbing up. I'm moving up. No, that's going to hurt me in the end. I'm going to hurt myself. Amen? Amen? Lying hurts you. Lying hurts people who love you. Lying lips are an abomination to God. If you're here this morning and you've been lying, come on, you need deliverance. Your life don't have to be a lie. You don't have to pretend to be a man of God. You can be a man of God. You don't have to pretend to be a woman of God. You can really be a woman of God. You don't have to pretend to be nice and kind. You can actually be nice and kind. 
But it's going to take some deliverance. It's going to take you getting that junk out of you. Amen. All here is about. Lord, we, we, we want to come before him in, in this benediction. We want to repent for lying. He hates it. We want to move away from it. And deal truthfully and be true witnesses. That we can deliver souls. People's lives will be changed from having a conversation with you. And you being honest and you being truthful. Another way we lie and then we're going to pray. Is stop lying and acting like you've always been saved. Stop lying and acting like you never did anything wrong. Why do why, why you want to portray that? You may not stand before a whole church and tell everybody what you did, especially something the saving God leads you to do it. But one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes we got to be truthful with people. We got to let people know exactly where we come from. We're not glorifying it, but we're just being a true witness of how he delivered us. So that they'll know wherever they at, they don't have to stay. That's being a true witness. When I look at Deacon Cochran back there, and when I think one time that as an alcoholic, as a man drinking himself to death, being told that you keep drinking, you're going to die. And he got down to how many, how many pounds you got down to, Deacon? 130. I'm going to do this nicely because folks say I do it mean. If you got to go, you can go. I'm trying to say that mean. Somebody, somebody told me when I say that, I'll be looking real mean. But if you have to leave, you, you're free to go. But Deke got down to 130 pounds. Now, he don't mind me telling him. If he do, it's too late. People thought he had AIDS. People thought, like, sometimes, this man, he got cancer. He got cancer. No, he an alcoholic. He an alcoholic. And one, there's only one person that's responsible for him being over 70, still moving like he doing, and even still being here, is that's Jesus. Don't clap. That's that Jesus delivered him. He delivered him. He can now be a true witness for people who feel like they cannot come out of that. There's your true witness. We don't brag when we talk about being a whoremonger. Nothing, nothing worth boasting about being a whore. Whether you a man whore or a woman whore. But guess what? That's what some of us found ourselves. But now we can be true witnesses. Am I right? Some of you was on drugs. And if people ever knew that you smoked crack. That you couldn't live without weed. Be a true witness where God plants you. Everybody in the church. I want to be a worldwide event. Just be a true witness. Where he plants you. And if he wants to send you around the world, then so be it. But let's be true witnesses where he plant us. Amen? Amen? There's a lot of things we can name. That some of us come out of, all y'all women ain't been chased all your life. Yeah, acting like you just so sweet. You ain't always been that sweet. Be a true witness. Let somebody know. Amen? Some of us ain't always had nice things. Let's folks know you weren't born without God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the word. Lord, that is our desire to be a true witness. Forgive us of speaking falsely. Forgive us of lies. Forgive us, Lord, of being deceitful. We know that you hate it. And we want to please you. We want to be that true witness that you have chosen for us to be. So I pray and ask that you have your way in all of your precious saints. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this message. Thank you that families are better. <coughs> Thank you that we're strengthened. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This has been Pastor Leonard Cochran here from a place of refuge located in Noonan, Georgia. Thank you all for joining us. Please share today's message with a family member, loved one, or a friend with expectation that it will be a blessing to them. If you've been lying, repent. Strive to be that true witness. You'll never be perfect. I'll never be perfect. But strive to be a true witness that you can deliver souls. You can be a part of helping people's lives be better. We love you all here at the place of refuge. Remember, Jesus is. Refuge. Come on, we're bringing our gifts. For choosing to worship with us today. 
Thank you everyone who attended the marriage seminar on yesterday. We had a wonderful time painting as couples. Be sure to follow our Marriage Ministry Facebook page to receive exclusive information and teachings geared towards helping marriages to be productive. It's time to celebrate our pastor and first lady. Please join us on Friday, April 26th for our Pastor Appreciation Night service. The speaker will be our very own Bishop Dr. Barry D. Walker. Service will start at 7.15 p.m. We will climax our appreciation service on Sunday, April 28th at 10.15 a.m. We are asking everyone to come out dressed in your best black and white attire. Be sure to purchase your copy of Brother Jay Spearman's book as well as Sister Kenyatta's book. Both books are available on Amazon. Our family vacation week will be June 10th through the 15th. We will not have Bible study on that week, so let's please make sure that we are purposed to spend time with our families on that week. I would like to say a happy birthday to Senior Minister Angie Mitchell, who celebrated her birthday on April the 5th. A happy birthday also goes out to Brother Willie Graham, who will celebrate his birthday on April 26th. We would like to wish everyone who celebrated and will celebrate a birthday in the month of April. Remember, celebrate yourself. As always, Refuge family and friends, we thank you for your past, your present, and your future support for this ministry. Now, we will resume back service.